Is it normal that my father still hits me even as an adult? Disclaimer, this is not my story time with sending me on Instagram. When I was a kid and I got in trouble, my dad would hit me. I always knew to expect it, so it wasn't a really big deal. But of course, I would do my best to stay out of trouble. Sometimes he would use a belt and sometimes he would slap me across the face. The slapping was the worst part. From the ages of 10 to 12, I didn't really get hit because I never got in trouble. When I turned 14, things started getting rough. I wanted to date boys and my dad was not having it. So his form of punishment sometimes was even taking food away from me. This happened on two occasions when I was 14 and I almost ran away because of it. I know most of you are thinking that my mom should have stepped in, but my mom was pretty afraid of my dad too. Sometimes I feel like my parents have brainwashed me into thinking that what my dad is doing is fine. The sad part is that I'm now 20 and my dad still hits me from time to time. I do have to say my father has always been there for me. He's provided me with a great life and a good education. And it's not like he would just hit me out of nowhere. It was only when I got in trouble and for specific reasons. But I do think he needs to stop it because I'm 20 now. Here's where things get really messy. I just got engaged and my fiance hates my father for part two. Is it normal that my father still hits me as an adult? Now that I'm 20 and engaged, I told my fiance about what my father did. Like I said, my father wouldn't just hit me out of nowhere. He would only do it when he was punishing me and for specific reasons. But my fiance loathes my father. He thinks it's abuse and that it wasn't a normal thing for me to have to endure as a child, especially as an adult. And I've only come to realize that what my dad is doing is probably wrong because of my fiance. Before that, I never had anybody in my life tell me that what my dad was doing was wrong. But here's what happened. My fiance and I were cooking in my parents' kitchen. My my dad must have been in a really bad mood because he comes into the kitchen and says, if you don't clean up this mess, I'm going to show your fiance how I slapped the shit out of you. My father had never shown that side of him in front of my fiance. But as soon as those words came out of my father's mouth, my fiance turned to him and said, you will never put your hands on her again. And my dad said, that's my daughter and I can do whatever I want. My fiance asked me to leave with him and I did. My mom called us and begged us to come back, but my fiance said no. Part three is is it normal that my father still hits me as an adult? After my fiancé stood up to my dad, we didn't speak to my family for about two months. That's when my fiancé asked me to go to therapy. And I did. And that's when I found out that what I really needed to do was fix my relationship with my father. Because he had always punished me physically, I held a lot of resentment towards him. And my father being very antiquated, he thought that he was doing the right thing. Now let me clear a few things up. He only hit me twice when I was an adult. Once when I was 19, I got a bad grade in one of my classes and he flipped out. He slapped me across the face and told me that that would teach me to do better. The second time was right after my 20th birthday. I had gotten into an argument with my mom that really wasn't such a big deal. My mom and I worked things out, but my dad thought it was inappropriate that I spoke to my mom like that. Was I very disrespectful? No. But to him, it was completely unacceptable. So he hit me once with his belt. My fiance is refusing to invite my parents to our wedding. And to be honest, I kind of agree with him. Ever since stepping away from my parents, I have so much more confidence. I'm also happier in my relationship because I'm getting to be myself. And I'm not afraid that anyone will punish me. But I do feel guilty. I want to reach out to my parents. I'm not her. What should I do? Am I wrong for lying to family and friends about who's the infertile one between my wife and I? My wife, 32 female, and I, 32 male, have been married for seven years, but we've been trying for a baby for the past three. It has taken a toll on our marriage, and I admit that many times I have complained to family, friends, and coworkers about my wife's infertility. Well, what I thought was my wife's infertility. Maybe it is because we live in Utah, but whenever the idea of us being infertile came up, people just swarmed in giving my wife recommendations for fertility specialists. The chalk was always, oh, my wife saw Dr. Whatever and we ended up having twins. Or maybe your wife is just too stressed out. And I believed it because my wife contracted TB when she was 20 and volunteering in another country. Her primary care, who she saw when she was back home, just flippantly told her that TB could affect the genital area and prevent her body from housing a baby. We finally found a doctor who straight up told us that there was nothing wrong with her fallopian tubes or her endometrium. She suggested I get tested to see that I'm not the problem. The verdict comes back that I am the one with very low sperm count. I was so shocked and wanted to get another opinion which told me the same thing. I felt so shaken. And because a lot of people knew about our struggles, they also knew we went to a doctor again. At a family and friends gathering, people started asking me about what we found out and I just panicked and said that my wife's TB was likely the cause but not 100% necessarily. People saw that as my wife being the problem and somebody even suggested I go through with divorcing her since I was 32 and complaining about being childish. People saw that as my wife being the problem and somebody even suggested that I go through with divorcing her since I was 32 and complaining about being childless, saying I could be a dad within a year since it was a short marriage. What I did not realize was that my mom and my aunt would jump on that suggestion and start telling friends and their kids that I was getting a divorce and that this was my wife's fault because she shouldn't have been so reckless when she was young. Wow! What was worse was some people thought it wasn't even TB, but a bacterial genital disease. This all got back to my wife through a friend, and she's furious. 
She said that she could not believe I've been painting her as a problem when she wasn't even the problem, and that she was tired of the pitying or disapproving looks she was getting in our small town and that I needed to set the record straight or at least tell everybody to shut up and that we are not divorcing. Am I the asshole here? I panicked and I felt like I didn't completely lie because TB could be exasperating our problem, but my mom really screwed things up by making it malicious. Now I'm in over my head and I feel really bad. Honestly, this is what- Keep your business your business! My half-sister tried to show up to my engagement party in a wedding dress. Story time. Me and my half-sister Amy have never been close. And we are both 24. My dad left my mum for Amy's mum just after I was born. And not only does Amy not like me, her mum's not my biggest fan either. Me and my fiancé Steve got engaged last month and our engagement party is on Saturday. We didn't want anything too crazy for the dress code so we just said like nice, casual, but formal. So one day when I was at work, my cousin messaged me and she was like, girl, I have got something to show you. And it was the outfit that Amy was planning on wearing to my party. Just some context, this is what she was planning on wearing. It was basically a wedding dress. And as you can imagine, this made me so mad. And I was like, fuck this, I'm changing the plan of the party. I was changing the dress code from casual, formal to fancy dress. And my mum's side of the family is crazy for Halloween, so they were buzzing. I text my dad and told him to relay the message on to Amy and her mum. And I knew full well he'd forget to do that and he'd tell them last minute. So Saturday rolls around and guests start arriving. And the majority of people were in costumes and it looked great. For those of them that it was too last minute, I'd already arranged for some spare costumes. It was basically just like fun hats and little wigs. I just entered my rare beauty on my clip. And I'm just waiting for the moment that my step family are gonna arrive. And they walk in an hour late. As soon as Amy walked in, she lost it. She realized everyone was wearing these big elaborate costumes and that she wasn't gonna stand out anymore with a stupid freaking wedding dress. And shocker, Amy ran out crying. My dad and stepmom, wicked witch, told me that I was being so childish and I'd really outdone myself this time. And for those wondering about costumes, I was Barbie and Steve was Ken and my mom and aunts were all ABBA. Am I the asshole because I, quote, didn't do enough to discourage my daughter from using OnlyFans? I, 47 female, am a single mom. When my daughter, now 21 female, was 18, I found out she had an OnlyFans account by accidentally walking in on her taking photos of herself. Oh, I was very angry and shocked. But once I got a bit more cool-headed, I realized that I probably wouldn't be able to stop her even if I tried. I sat her down and tried to explain what my concerns were and how she should give this decision a lot of thought. But I emphasized that I would still love and support her even if she decided to continue. Since she was old enough to make decisions for herself, I felt a lot of sympathy for her because as a single mother, I wasn't able to provide for her the nice life she deserved growing up. We were living in a one-bedroom apartment for many years, frequently skipping on meals to make ends meet. The few hundred extra dollars in her pocket every month from OnlyFans made a real difference to her happiness. She was able to go out with her friends to concerts, buy nicer clothes and makeup, and didn't have to work her weekend job. When the pandemic hit and OnlyFans exploded in popularity, she went from making a few hundred dollars a month to a few thousand. Over those months, OnlyFans became a full-time career for her. When restrictions eased up, she started performing hardcore content and, with her newfound money, was able to afford a lavish, by my standards at least, style of living. She rented a nice place of her own, partied a lot, and seemed to be enjoying her life. Last week, she showed up at my place in tears. She was broke, and she admitted that she'd developed a drug problem. She screamed at me, telling me I'd ruined her life and that I should have stopped her from using OnlyFans when she was 18. She called me irresponsible, lazy for not making more money so that she wouldn't have had to turn to OnlyFans, and a horrible mother. She told me that every relationship she ever cared about ended when the guy found out what she did for a living and that I shouldn't have, quote, stood by applauding while she ruined her life. Her comments really hurt me and I've been crying nonstop for the past week pretty much. Mm. I'm torturing myself with these thoughts and I just want to know where I stand. I'm worried I let my daughter down and that she's right. I am a terrible mother, but I also feel intensely angry at her. Like I'll go crazy unless I scream, I told you so, and you didn't listen at her. Was I an asshole mother or should I be justifiably angry about how she's handled Handled her life. Oh, that makes my heart hurt. That the fact that was posted five hours ago, too. Yeah. All I'm saying is moms are doing their best. Everyone thinks that even when you're growing up, you're like, my mom knows everything. They don't. They're doing the best they can. So I really don't think she's the asshole in this situation. I think you need to be stern as an adult, as a parent, like looking at your child, even though they're 18. Yes, they're an adult. I don't think if she would have been sterner or maybe if she could have been sterner, yeah. that it would have made a difference. Yeah. No. So I think it would have severed the relationship even more. I I agree. 
agree. And I think what you need to do right now, instead of focusing on if you're an asshole or not, and if you cause this or not, is get your daughter help. My mother was raised in Puerto Rico, and I love talking to her because anytime she forgets a word in English, I get to go on a little journey with her to find it. I was on the phone with her the other day, and this is what she told me. She was like, I went to Walmart, and I saw this chair, and it was like a chair, but with no bones. Tu sabe. And I'm like, okay, a chair with no bones. She's like, see, it's like a boneless chair. You sit on it, you go, squish. <laughs> a beanbag chair? <laughs> A bean chair? That sounds wrong. No. My mother's first language is Spanish, so sometimes when I talk to her in English, she'll forget a word or two, but not a problem. She'll just create new words, words no one else was brave enough to use. She took my little cousins to the mall once, and this is what she told me when she got back. She was like, it was so cute. I took the kids on one of those, um, El Horse Tornado or whatever. You know what it is. I'm sorry. El horse tornado? I'm gonna need you to elaborate. And she was like, you know what I'm talking about. You put that attitude down, you put it down. I was like, okay, putting it down. Sorry. <laughs> she said, don't try me. I'll kick your ass. And I was like, you don't need to kick my ass. Just put me in a horse tornado. I'll be terrified. You think you're funny? Mom, how would you act if someone said that to you in Spanish? Tornado de caballos. That sounds horrifying. She was like, okay, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Merry-go-round, by the way. It was a merry-go-round. Talking to my mom is like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube. Like, I think I can figure it out, but it's gonna take me a minute. Like, I remember growing up, she just bust open my door once, looked at me, and went, Where is the grass fucker? I'm like, I don't know what you're asking me. Where's the grass and I'm the fucker? Or where's the grass fucker as in one word? Do you mean the gardener? Are you calling the gardener that? Because you should stop if you've been doing that. She's like, no, it's an item. It goes, raka -taka -taka -taka. Where is it? Weed whacker? Are you looking for the weed whacker? Yes. The neighbor has it. Why would I have it? I'm 16. I'm just trying to figure out if I'm gay or not. Spoiler alert. Why would I be messing with your gardening supplies? Okay. Go get it. I guess I'll go get you the weed whacker. As some of you know, when my mother forgets a word, she is the queen of coming up with new words that aren't bound by the laws of English. And usually they're fun, but sometimes they're terrifying. I was like 16 when this happened, but she ran in from the backyard, kind of panicked, and was like, you need to be careful when you're out there? I just saw one of those, you know, like a spider lobster. And I was like, I was trying to do my homework, but you saw what? Spider lobster. I forgot what it's called. And I was like, I'm gonna need you to think harder because I can't sleep with a spider lobster outside. It's gonna get me. And she's like, okay. Picture like a crab who's just like a total asshole. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I could take on asshole crab 1v1, but spider lobster, that'll beat me in the cage match. And I think it'll drag me to hell after. <laughs> and then I visualized a spider lobster in my head and I was like, Mom, do you mean a scorpion? Because scorpion in Spanish is just escorpión. And she's like, oh shit, you're right, it's the same word. I was like, yeah, wait, we have scorpions? When my mom forgets a word, she is the queen of coming up with new words on the spot that are just insane. And this talent she has, has a holiday edition. A few Christmases ago, I was sitting in her living room and she just turns to me and she goes, do you know where the Christmas hookers went? Where'd they go? Or I, don't, I didn't know they were migrating. <laughs> if I had to guess, they're probably at the corner behind Santa's workshop. <laughs> I don't want no holiday ladies of the night, you know that. I don't want no sexy elves, I don't want- You don't want any Santa's little helpers? <laughs> no. I need them for decoration. Mom, come on. They're people, don't talk about them like that. <laughs> I need a- I just want to have a good Christmas for once, for Jesus. Ah yes, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, they're three wise men and they're Christmas hookers. Hey, it gets lonely in the desert, okay? <laughs> now do you know where they are or not? Well, if you mean the ornament hooks, they're in that box. When my mother forgets a word, she is the queen of coming up with new words. Words the world isn't ready for. <laughs> I was talking to her on the phone the other day, and she said this. Remember when you were in that music class, and they had you playing the little, um, El Ring-a-Ding-Ding -ding essay? <laughs> El Ring-a-Ding-Ding? -ding? Really, Frank Sinatra? I ain't never played no Ring-a-Ding-Ding, -ding, she. She was like, what? <laughs> it was little, and you would hit it, and it would go like, bling. I think they gave it to you so you felt like you were participating because you sucked. <laughs> Why am I getting my feelings hurt for like no reason? What did the instrument look like, mom? It looked like a triangle. Are you messing with me? What? <laughs> yes. It was the triangle if you're having trouble keeping up. When my mother forgets a word, she is the queen of coming up with new words. Words no one else was brave enough to use. <laughs> And she likes to bring out her worst words when we're in public. We were out to dinner a few years ago, and she said this. Do you think they sell grabapples here? 
I really, really hope not. You can't say stuff like that. What? Oh, I guess that does sound pretty bad. But no, I mean the fish. Do you think they have it? No. No, I don't think they have Grabopus. I think they have burgers. You know, when you say it like that, it kind of sounds like our last president. <laughs> Yeah, it does. Okay, so it's a fish. Can I get any more hints? Well, it grabs a bunch. I don't know what better hint I can give you. A fish that grabs a bunch. If it's an octopus, I'm walking home. I think you're walking home. But you can't tell me that grab a puss isn't a better word for an octopus. <laughs> when my mother forgets a word, she is the queen of coming up with new words. Words ain't nobody got time for. She told me the other day that she found this new show she loves. And I asked what I thought was a simple question. What's the show? And she's just on the phone like, um, I think it's called The World's Gonna Blow Up. And I'm on the other end of the phone like, that's not, that's not a fucking show. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be a normal conversation, but she snuck this on me. And I'm like, okay, maybe you saw this on Telemundo. Like, is it actually called El Mundo Va a Explotar? Starring Will Smith. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Guillermo E. Smith. And I swear, sometimes when she's messing with me, she'll lose her accent completely. She'll be like, the show is produced by CBS. She sounds like Siri. I enjoy it quite because of the discourse on quantum physics. I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to play anymore. She goes, mira, mira. Bazinga. <laughs> the Big Bang Theory? Don't call me anymore. <laughs> I enjoy drinking, uh, but I don't think I'm the greatest friend to drink with. Because I'm the kind of person that doesn't show signs that they're drunk. Uh, so people trust me. <laughs> I'm not, like, out committing crimes or anything, but what'll happen is drunk people at parties will look to me to be the voice of reason, because I look sober, but I'm just as drunk as they are, and now I have authority. <laughs> My roommates came up to me at a pool party once, and they were looking for the beer funnel, and they were like, we've lost the ability to bend over without puking, so you gotta get it. So with confidence, I'm just like, I got the beer funnel right here, and I hand them a huge pool noodle. <laughs> and they're just confused. They're like, this isn't a beer funnel, this is a pool noodle, and I'm like... Psh What's in a name, bro? <laughs> a beer funnel by any other name will still get you fucked up. And with that, you're safe from drowning. <laughs> I think when I'm at my worst is when people are like, should I send this text to my ex? And I'm like, no, you should send it to his dad so he knows you're mature. <laughs> I would get my karma in the mornings when I was hungover and people would be yelling at me. <laughs> I woke up in the pool. Yeah, but you floated, didn't you? When my wife and I first started dating, we were in a long distance relationship. And my mother would roast me about that all of the time. Since I was always on my phone, my mom would be like, Honey, you look like you're dating your iPhone 5. At least date a 7, you broke bitch. <laughs> Are you even sure you have the right number? <laughs> and I was like, Yes, Mom, I'm pretty sure. I've been talking to my girlfriend. She was like, Okay. But I changed that number to A77 Cash Now like three weeks ago, and you didn't even notice. <laughs> mom, I don't have the brain space for this right now. I really don't. She went, Okay, I can prove it. Does she tell you all the time that she loves you? I'm like, okay, I'll play along. Yes, she does. Does she tell you she wants to come see you? Uh-huh. Does she tell you she has a structured settlement and she needs cash now? <laughs> I'm moving out. I, I'm gone. <laughs> if we make it into old age, we are going to be menaces. So this is what I imagine it's going to be like for the nurses who try to get a job at our future retirement home. They're going to come in and the boss is going to be like, okay, here's your first question. Four residents say they have a basketball game tomorrow. What do you do? be like, well, I would check their schedule and I would make sure they're safe in the court. Eh, wrong. None of the residents have a basketball game tomorrow. We don't know why they keep saying this. Next question. It's laundry day, but the only soap you see in the laundry room is Tide Pods. What do you do? Well, you break out the Tide Pods and you get to washing. Eh, you break out the Tide Pods? What, do you want people to die? Last question. You have two residents. One of them parts their hair down the middle. The other one parts it on the side, but you see on their chart that they have to be roommates. What do you do? I think I'm going to work at Chili's. I think that's what I'm going to do instead. <laughs> Most days I wake up, I have about the same amount of energy as like a wet taco. I, and I don't know what to do about it anymore, because I get the eight hours of recommended sleep. I wake up at my best, and I still feel soggy, like in my heart. I wish the more I slept, the more like energy I could build up, and, and I know you're like, that's how sleep works. But not really, because right now you sleep for 8 hours, you wake up at 100%. You sleep for 12 hours, you're going to feel the same, maybe worse. This is what I want. I want to sleep for a week, wake up at 2,000% capacity. If I sleep for a week, I want to be able to wake up to new colors. I I'm sick of magenta. It's a useless color. I haven't seen a new color since I was one. After sleeping for a week, I want to I wanna jump higher, run faster. I want to walk to a middle school where they're doing the pacer test and just kick everybody's ass. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like round 50 of the Pacer test, and it's just like Kyle and Kyle and me, neck to neck. I want Kyle energy. Have you ever seen a tired Kyle? Never. Am I wrong for leaving all of my groceries at the register when the cashier refused to sell me alcohol? Abundance and Bounty are two supermarket chains, both with stores 20 minutes away from me and 50 minutes apart from each other. I, 33 male, usually go to Abundance unless I want something I can only get at Bounty. And I haven't been asked for ID when buying alcohol in over 8 years at either store, or anywhere else for that matter. I went to Abundance yesterday to buy my weekly groceries and picked up a 6 pack of beer to enjoy on the weekend. I set the beers down in front of my other groceries on the conveyor belt and moved to the other side to start packing. The cashier saw the beer and asked me for ID. I told him I didn't have any ID on me and he told me he couldn't sell me the beer and place it on the side. I politely said, okay, no problem, have a nice day, and then walked away leaving all of my groceries on the conveyor belt. I didn't take anything. As I walked away, he shouted, excuse me, sir, but I saw no reason to waste time on continuing a discussion because he already made his decision. And I understand how strict they need to be when it comes to alcohol and ID. My mother worked in a liquor store for several years. To be very clear, I did not do this to get back at him, but rather because it meant I needed to go to Bounty to get the beer. And it didn't make sense to drag all of my heavy grocery items from Abundance to Bounty when I could just get the same groceries from Bounty, including the beer. I also figured carrying bags of groceries from Abundance around Bounty wasn't wise because it might raise suspicion of shoplifting. So I went from Abundance to Bounty, bought everything I needed from Bounty, including the beer, then went home. When I got back, my girlfriend asked why it took so long, and after explaining it, she said I was an asshole for making things difficult for the staff at Abundance. Because they would need to restock all of my stuff and possibly throw things away. I don't know if the last part is true, but she knows someone who works in a similar store and explained that they're pretty strict on how long certain products are allowed to be outside the freezer and refrigerators. She also said it was extremely rude that I just walked away when the cashier was trying to talk to me. I asked what she would have done, but she didn't have an answer besides just coming home without the beer, but I don't see that as a solution. So, am I the asshole?